Hi, I'm Scott Cusey, and I'll be your narrator and host as we take a look at maintaining the cooling system on your vehicle. You know, there's three common causes for an unexpected roadside failure. Number one cause is, believe it or not, running out of gas. Number two is having a flat tire. And the third most common cause of an unexpected roadside breakdown, a cooling system failure that probably could have been prevented with proper maintenance because oftentimes it's just a failure in a belt or a hose. Now we're going to detail those procedures and more on this tape and help you learn how to keep your cooling system lasting longer and working better. In this chapter, we're going to talk about some of the tools that you're going to use to complete the projects that we demonstrate and a few of the specialty items that you might need throughout the tape. Now, as far as tools are concerned, it's really a basic selection of hand tools that many people already have. That includes some wrenches, pliers, crescent wrenches, screwdrivers, and a few other odds and ends like that. But it's really no high-tech tools needed during this videotape. Now, as far as specialty tools, there's a few items that you are going to need that you may not have. The first item is right here, a cooling system tester. Now, I've got three various types of testers here, and they all work quite well. One of the things I like to do is use a large tester because I can pull more volume up into the, the tester as far as antifreeze itself, and it gives me a little bit better idea of the condition of antifreeze in there. I can see rust or corrosion in it a little bit better. So that's the only reason. But you are going to need a cooling system tester to check the condition of your coolant. Also, one of the things I like to use periodically is some anti-rust. I like to put some of that in about once every year. It just helps replenish some of the corrosion inhibitors in your antifreeze. Now, if you're going to be flushing the system, I suggest getting a radiator flush like this, or if the system's really dirty, get a heavy-duty radiator cleaner similar to this one here, because that'll help get that rust and corrosion out of there so when you replenish the antifreeze, you've got a new system again. Right here's an item that's kind of handy when you're working on cooling systems. It happens to be a funnel that's designed specifically for cooling systems, and this part of the funnel fits right down the radiator and that kind of sits right in place. Makes it sort of handy so you can use both hands when you're pouring out of the gallon of antifreeze. Now, if you're going to be flushing the system, a couple different styles of kits available. This kit's been out on the market for many years, been used, and works real well. This style of kit here is a replacement system type of kit, and it really works nice because you can capture the old antifreeze, and actually, if you're going to take it to a recycling center, it really makes for a clean type of operation. The last point I'd like to make, always replace clamps when you're replacing hoses. And most new style of clamps will have a hex right on the top of them that you'll need to tighten. You can use a screwdriver, or what I like to use is a little socket like this here because not only can you tighten it a little bit better, but if you want to get on it, you can also add some extensions or use a little ratchet on it if it's in a difficult to get at spot. So kind of a neat little tip to use there. In chapter two, we're going to take a look at something you should do on at least a weekly basis, and that is check your coolant level. Chapter three, we're going to take a look at actually inspecting the coolant and testing its freeze and boil over condition. In Chapter 4, we'll do a demonstration on flushing your cooling system. Chapter 5, we'll concentrate on inspecting and replacing coolant hoses. Chapter 6, we'll talk about inspecting and replacing V-belts. And in Chapter 7, we'll spend a little bit of time on the newer style of belt on today's vehicle, and that is replacing a serpentine style belt. Right now, I'd like to take just a moment to thank you for choosing Car Care Seminar to help you become a more successful do-it-yourselfer. And before you start your next repair, check to see if there's a Car Care Seminar tape available to help you do it the right way the first time and every time. Now, let's get started with our first repair. Inspecting your vehicle's engine coolant fluid level will help protect your vehicle's engine and prevent costly engine damage. When checking fluid levels, make sure you park the vehicle on a level surface. When checking your engine coolant level, 
First determine if you have a closed or non-closed system. A closed system will have a coolant recovery bottle located on the fender. A non-closed system will not have a coolant recovery bottle. This type of system is primarily found on older vehicles. Refer to a service manual or your owner's manual to help determine which system your vehicle has. On closed systems, the recovery bottle will have one or two levels marked on the side. The lower mark indicates where the coolant level should be when the engine is cold. The upper mark on the bottle indicates where the coolant level should be when the engine is fully warmed up. Check the fluid level against the correct mark depending on if the engine is cold or hot. If the coolant level is low, remove the coolant recovery cap and using a funnel, add a 50-50 blend of coolant and water to the recovery bottle to bring it up to the correct level. Once the level is correct, replace the recovery cap. To check the coolant level on a non-closed system, you need to remove the radiator cap. Be careful and never remove the radiator cap when the engine is hot. Always make sure the engine is cool before removing the radiator cap to prevent personal injury. With the cap off, inspect the coolant level. Generally on a non-closed system, the coolant level should be approximately one inch below the bottom of the radiator neck. If low, add a 50-50 blend of coolant and water. After checking the fluid level, reinstall the radiator cap securely onto the radiator neck. Let's quickly recap checking the coolant level. First, determine which type of cooling system you have. On a closed system, check the coolant level by the marks found on the recovery bottle. On a non-closed system, check the coolant level to be sure it's just below the radiator cap filler neck and open the system only when cold. Add a 50-50 mixture of coolant to either type to bring up to the correct level. The only item you will need to inspect and test your engine coolant is an antifreeze tester. When inspecting and testing your engine coolant, always start with a cool engine. Never work on any part of the cooling system when the engine is hot or has just finished running. With the engine cool, locate and remove the radiator cap. Insert a finger into the filler neck and rub the underside of the radiator tank. Once again, the system must be cool. If your finger comes out dirty, the system contains rust, scale, and lime deposits. These deposits indicate the cooling system should be completely flushed and new coolant added to prevent premature failure of the other components within the system. Another means for inspecting the condition of your coolant is with an antifreeze tester. There are several types of testers available. For testing ethylene glycol based coolant, the most common type, we recommend using a large type of tester as shown. They are more accurate, easy to use, and allow better visual inspection of the coolant for rust and sediment. Insert the end of the tester into the radiator neck and draw a sample of the engine coolant. Be sure to draw enough coolant